All right, here we are again. Good morning or afternoon or evening. Don't know when it is. Um, this is going to be the last section of notes for the periodic table. And this is going to be, let's see, for March 31st, which is Tuesday. So Tuesday, March 31st. So we left off with looking at the different groups, the special groups like halogens, noble gases. Um, and again, you can always replay the videos if you want to refresh your memory um, or just see them again, if, if that helps kind of um, help things kind of sink in for you. So we are gonna look at something real quick. I don't want you to get too like distracted or hung up with this idea. This is called the line emission spectrum. And this is how we kind of know what's going on with things. Um, again, this is kind of some of that extra information, just like when we did history of the atom was extra information, just to give you kind of the whole story and um, so you can understand kind of the background. Um, so these next two slides are just kind of extra. So scientists know all of this because the lowest energy state of an atom is something that's called the ground state. It's the lowest state. And then as you move up in those levels, it gets excited, it, gets, it gains energy. Okay. So when an electron has a higher potential energy than the ground state, we call that excited, right? Um, and so you can kind of see them showing this here as the electron's moving up an energy level, um, it's saying that it becomes excited when it leaves that ground state. And when it does that, um, they produce um, different colors or spectrums of light as they return down to their normal ground state and each element has a unique color or light spectrum that it releases. So you can kind of see um, hydrogen, um, you have neon, you have iron, and they're gonna release different spectrums um, as they go down. And this helps us identify um, different elements. So again, don't get too hung up on this idea, um, but it, some people get curious and ask, so I, I try to include it. Um, this video will be linked for you. And we're going to move on to ionic charges. So I kind of had mentioned during one of the sections of notes something called ionic bonds. And those deal with ions, um, which are elements that have a charge of some sort, whether a positive charge or a negative charge. So now we're going to kind of explain that a little bit more depth. Um, oops, I accidentally clicked the video. We do have a brain pop for this. And so you will that will be linked for you um, under today's information and you can watch that. Please do, it explains things really well. Um, so here's the key with all atoms and elements. They like to be stable, they like to be satisfied, they like to be happy. Just kind of like all of us, right? That's how we, you know, if we had a choice, we'd be stable, happy, and satisfied with everything, right? Usually stable elements are found in that group 18 or valence group eight. Okay, so all the way on the far right. Does anybody remember what those elements are called as group 18? They were a special category. I should think for a second, because we had alkali, we had alkaline, we had our halogens, and we had noble gases. Do you remember which one of those four would be found in group 18 or valence group eight? Hopefully you said the noble gases, um, because that is the correct answer. Um, but elements that don't have a full outer energy level can form something called ions. All the other elements besides group 18, so groups one through 17, which is by far the majority of the periodic table, they are able to form ions, okay? And so if they form ions, they're gonna have an ionic charge. And so ion is one of your vocab terms. Um, you know, it's an element that has either more electrons or less electrons than you would expect. It is charged. Um, and so we're able to pre predict the charge that an atom is going to have based on that vertical group that it belongs to. You know, whether it's group 1, group 13, group um, 2, whatever it might be, we can predict based on the number of valence electrons. So this is where it becomes really useful to use those groups 1 through 8 instead of groups 1 through 18 where we would be ignoring kind of those shorter bars, those transition metals, because again, those are not as predictable. Um, you'll learn more about how you could get closer to predicting, but for an introduction, we don't need to, to touch on that. So we're just gonna kind of ignore those transition metals. So elements in group one have one outer electron. Those are our alkali metals. Remember that I comes before the N in alkaline, so the alkali group comes before the alkaline and group one comes before group two. So 
If they have one electron in that outer shell, all the shells inside of that or below that are already full and stable. So if they can get rid of that one extra electron, they drop down to the lower energy level, and now that atom becomes stable. And again, that's what all atoms are trying to do. So if it gets rid of one, then it's gonna form a plus one ion. Plus one because it has lost an electron. If it has less electrons, now it has become positively charged. You have more protons than you do electrons. So remember, Neutral doesn't always mean stable. So a lot of our atoms are going to be neutral, but that doesn't mean that they're stable. Neutral just means you have five protons and you have five electrons. Well, if that five electrons makes it unstable and you could get rid of a couple or gain a couple to make it stable, then that's what it's going to do. So don't confuse being neutral with stable because those are two separate ideas. Neutral just means the proton number and the electron number will cancel each other out totally. So um, when we look at this, this is going to be an important chart. Um, it says to determine a charge, if you ask yourself, what does the element have more of now, protons or electrons? Whatever your answer is, that's going to be the charge that the atom now has. So if you ask yourself, if it has more protons, protons are positive, it's going to be positively charged now. If it has more electrons, electrons are negatively charged, it will have a negative charge now. Um, another way to remember it is that all of these have, um, you know, the first three are going to always be positive. Those are our metals and they are going to be givers. They are going to give negatives away, meaning they're left with more positives, okay? Um, don't let that plus sign mean like you're adding in electrons, all right? This is not dealing with what you're taking or losing. This is dealing with the charge only, all right? So notice, variable charges, meaning these transition metals are not really predictable at the moment, so we are going to kind of leave those um, on their own for now. Also, if you look in group valence group four, it has a plus or a minus. Because what was that magic number that they're trying to get to? Does anybody remember? Form a stable octet, maybe? What would the octagon remind you of, or octet remind you of? That prefix octa. Well, you're saying eight, right? So the goal is to get to um, that valence electron level, that outer level of eight electrons. So here it's easier to give up one, two, or three. When you're at four, you're right in the middle. That's the halfway. So some of these will give away four, some of these will take four. And so when I ask you to predict and do things, I'm not gonna use any of the elements in this valence group four because that, it's too difficult right now. It's beyond where we are. Um, as you look here, as you get to valence group five, let me write the valence groups up here. That might help. So this is valence group one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Notice on your paper, your periodic table, I think these are in green and I have them circled just like this at the top of the columns, top of the groups. And so if you're looking at these, you can see it's easier to get rid of one, two, or three. Four is kind of that in between. And then once you get to group, valence group five, is it gonna be easier to get rid of five or to gain three? It's easier to do something with three things than do something with five. So this group is going to gain three. Notice it has a minus sign. This minus sign is not meaning that it is losing something. The minus here means it's actually gained three negatives, which are three electrons. So don't think of this as adding and minusing. Think of this as what the charge is, all right? And then group six, you have six electrons. All you need are two more. So is it easier to get, this, to get rid of six or to gain two? Obviously, it's gonna be easier to gain two, which is why it has a negative charge because it has picked up two negative electrons. Same thing with group seven, which this group is the halogen group. They have seven electrons, so it's a lot easier just to gain one electron to add to your seven to make your eight than it is to get rid of seven things. And, you know, the atoms are going to do what is easiest, and so gaining one is easier than getting rid of seven. And then at eight, they don't have to do anything, right? They're happy. They've done it, right? They have eight. That's why they're the noble gases. They sit there on their donkeys, right? 
and they don't do anything. They don't want to get any. They don't want to give any. They're stable, satisfied, happy. This is like the nirvana, right? This is what all of the other elements are trying to get to. Like they want to be like the ha the, excuse me, like the noble gases. Um, remember that special little element in the top right hand corner, that helium. It's also a noble gas, even though it only has two valence electrons. It's special because it's so small, it only has one energy level, and that first energy level can only hold two electrons. So because it has its outer energy level, which is its only energy level, totally satisfied and full, it is considered stable and satisfied. All right, so all the other ones will have eight in their outer level, except helium has two because it is only one energy level and it can only hold the two. So this is kind of the main thing. And then if you look down here, it says plus means losing electrons. Negative means gaining electrons. You can't think of it in terms of positive and negative uh, or like plusing and minusing. You have to think of it in terms of um, what charges things are. You've gained negatives. So now you have a negative charge, even though when you think negative, usually you think of that as a loss. So it's kind of reverse. And if you think of things as positive, you think of it as a gain. Well, here you haven't gained anything. You've actually lost negatives, making it positive. So you just have to ask yourself, what do I have more of? If you ask yourself that, then that usually leads you in the right direction. All right, so let's go on to slide um, number 66 here. And again, this is just kind of showing you another way. And these are helpful slides for you to look at. Um, the valence groups are up here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then notice because helium is special, it has a two slash eight. Obviously the rest of these are all eight. And it says they don't form ions. Here, um, it's showing all these metals are forming positive ions and these will too. It's just that we can't really predict them. Maybe it's two, maybe it's three, um, sometimes four. And again, that's beyond where we are because those charges can, can vary. Um, and then if we get over here to our non-metals, they are the takers. They are going to take negatives, which makes them have a negative charge. All right, so we had talked about um, um, Niels Bohr, um, his, his model of the electron and the arrangement. And so this is kind of using that to show the electrons without doing like circles and like um, energy levels. We're just focusing on the very outer energy level. And this is called a Lewis dot model um, or an electron dot model. And what happens is each of these dots is gonna represent an electron. And obviously the letter is gonna represent the atomic symbol or the element that you're dealing with. All right, so the first thing you have to do is find out which group or column your element's in. And again, look at the color coding. We are ignoring all the white ones. We're looking at the tall columns, not the short ones. And so this tells you the number of valence electrons that your element has. So if you're here in the orange group, which is the alkaline metals, you would be dealing with um, group two, all right? So that tells you the number of valence electrons that your element has, because all of these have two electrons in their valence. All these have one, all these have three, four, five, six, seven, eight, except for helium again, which is two. You can only count or use the valence electrons. So we don't care about all those other electrons in the lower energy levels. Because remember, once you get an energy level full, then another energy level forms and then you drop down to the next row and you go over and keep adding electrons till it gets full and then you drop down and come back again. All right, so keep that part in mind too. All right, so all the other energy levels below are totally full and you're dealing with the outer energy level that is the valence level. All right, so the first thing you're gonna do is you write the element symbol, carbon. Carbon's in the fourth group, so it has four valence electrons. So watch as they get added on here. We're gonna to start to the right, top, left, bottom. All right? Right, top, left, bottom. And they say to go clockwise. Do we really know how people are doing them? No, not if there's four, but if there were only three and you went one, two, three, then we would know you didn't go clockwise. So always go one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Kind of keep going around. And these will pop up and you can watch as they get added as we look at these examples here in a minute. So check your work. Use your periodic table. Check that carbon is in the fourth valence group. It is. 
So that means you should have four dots around the carbon. All right, so on your worksheet, um, or on your paper, you have these elements. So we have hydrogen. So look at your periodic table, find hydrogen. I'll give you a hint, it's in the alkali metal group. And so hopefully you'll see that it's in valence group one, meaning it should have one electron. Phosphorus, oops, phosphorus. Um, take a look, it is a non-metal, and so it's gonna be on the right-hand side of your table. And hopefully you see that it is in valence group five. So you should have right, top, left, bottom, and then you start repeating again going to the right. It was in valence group five, so you have five dots. And feel free to pause me at any time. Mute, don't mute me, because then you won't hear things. I know that's a nice feature you probably like to use all the time. Um, but if I'm going too fast or just you want to look at your chart, just, just pause it, okay? And then pick back up when you're ready. Um, but sometimes it does take a minute to find these, and obviously I'm not going to just sit and wait and wait for you to find it, because I don't even know how long it's taking everybody. So feel free to pause me. Calcium. It is going to be a metal. It's an alkaline. So hopefully that keys you in right away that that would be in valence group two. And so it's going to have a top, or a right, and then a top. So two dots because it's in valence group two. Argon. Right, it is a, let me double check, I think, noble gas. Yes, noble gas. And so hopefully you're looking in that far right column. And if it's a noble gas, then you know it should have one, two, three, four, and then repeat, five, six, seven, and eight. I feel kind of like a dance instructor or something, counting the time off. Okay, let's go to chlorine. Chlorine is a, um, halogen so it's going to be um, over there in group seven valence group seven so hopefully that's keying in that you should have seven electrons so seven dots right top left bottom right top left again it only needs one more electron so the beauty of these um, Lewis dot structures is it visually lets you see what's going on so if I'm looking at this and I know chlorine needs eight, is it easier to get rid of these seven or just to add one more? I mean, obviously, one more. Just give it one more electron. So if we would just give it, let me find a good one here, maybe. Hold on, get across in front of you here. Ah, what are all my circle ones? Okay, um, just trying to find a good magnet here. Ah, here we go. If we would just give it one more electron, now it would have eight. It would be satisfied, it would be stable, it would be content. Now it would have one more electron, so now it's a negatively charged ion, but it's still stable and satisfied, okay? So that's what is so nice about having these, um, making these Lewis dot structures. It lets you see what's going on. Um, so we have aluminum. It is a metal, but it's kind of on the right-hand side of the table, so try to find that. Hopefully you found that it is in valence group three, so it's gonna have three electrons, three dots, right, top, left, and now. You're trying to get to eight. It's gonna be easier to add five more or to get rid of the three. Obviously, it's gonna be easier to get rid of the three, so that's why it's gonna lose electrons. And up until this point, if the number of electrons, so aluminum is, um, has an atomic number of 13, so it has a total of 13 protons and 13 electrons. If you lose three electrons, now you have 13 protons and only 10 electrons. What do you have more of? You have more protons. What charge do protons have? Positive, okay? So that's the way these kind of work. You walk yourself through that and, and um, follow those questions. Usually it, it helps it get you to the answer. This is a link um, that I will have posted for today. It's pretty interesting. Um, new elements are they're constantly being discovered. Um, and Well, not constantly, but are discovered. And so I'll let that video kind of walk you through that. Um, okay, so here is all of the stuff. This is putting everything together that we have talked about so far. So I want to do something at the top of this so I don't forget. And I think I would like you to do this on your notes as well. 
Because remember on the bottom of that periodic table on the left corner, I had written, remember how this is protons and neutrons if we're dealing with the mass number? And then the atomic number is just protons. And I said there's no number for neutrons on your periodic table. So if you subtract these two, it will equal your number of neutrons. So once we get this number and this number, we'll subtract them to get our number of neutrons. And then remember, these two were equal, right? Because the no atomic number is the number of protons. And if these were talking total electrons, so the number of protons will equal the number of electrons because we're assuming everything is neutral. All right, so this answer will be the same as this one. And then this goes with our small numbers, right, ignoring the transition metals. And then um, this way we can get all the information that we need based on um, everything that we, that we know, kind of putting it all together. So let's take a look at chlorine. Find chlorine on your periodic table. And again, feel free to pause me um, if you want to try to fill this in before we do it together. Um, you can do that. Um, that might be a good practice. And then with oxygen, the same thing. So I'm going to assume that you have paused me and I'm going to continue here. So chlorine is in, um, find the period that chlorine is in. And so if you look at your periodic table, and remember, the periods were shown in red on the key, right? So you find that it is matching period three. And then valence group, oh, I'm sorry, total group, let's do this, group one through 18. I'm sorry, I should have had you write this as well. These are groups one through 18. These are periods one through seven on the side, right? These are listed on the side. These are on the top. Valence, if we want to write, these are the groups one through eight. So those are the key things that might be really helpful for you. Okay, now we're ready. Um, so if you look at chlorine, it is in group 17. If you look at the square, there are two numbers. The mass number, oh gosh, one more thing, let's add this, is going to be the big number, right? And this is the small number because the mass number is massive, just like the number, meaning that it's bigger. And the atomic number atom is small, just like its number is small, the small one. So the big number on your table should be um, exactly like 35.45. We can just say 35. Remember, just use whole numbers because on your chart, it gives the average and we don't need the average, we can just round up. Um, for the small number, you see the 17. So we subtract these and you get 18. That's the number of neutrons. Um, if you look at the atomic number, it says it has to equal your number of protons, okay? And then total number of electrons is gonna equal, and then valence electrons, it's in valence group seven, and it's always gonna be 10 less than this number because there were those 10 transition metals, that are columns that we ignored, so it's seven. And then we draw the dot just like we did before, so we pick chlorine and then there'll be seven dots. Oxygen, if you look at your periodic table, is in period two. It was in group 16. The number exactly um, is 16, 16.00, um, so no rounding even there. And then the small number is going to be eight. And then when you subtract those, you get eight neutrons. And the atomic number matches the number of protons, so that is also eight. The total number of electrons is 8 because it's neutral, and then the valence group is going to be 6, and so there should be 6 dots around the oxygen, and so a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, so again, it's going to gain 2 electrons. It's easier to add 2 than to get rid of 6, so it's going to have a negative charge when it forms or if it forms an ion, right? So here, it's neutral when the protons and electrons equal each other. But if I would give it two extra, let me get a couple more magnets. If we would gain two more electrons, now it's going to have a negative two charge because it has two additional electrons that it gained. Electrons are negative, so it gives it a negative charge. Okay. Um, oops. Go. 
go. Um, and I believe, yeah, I will um, have this link. This is Dimitri Mendela, the one that um, the scientist who first arranged the periodic table, even though we've tweaked it. He's the one that said, hey, we need to have some kind of organization or order to our elements. Okay. And that ends our notes. So we are going to do a lot of practice with this. Um, and feel free to do more than I post. Um, you are welcome to do the cahoots as many times as you want, the gim kits, the quizlets, obviously all that material is there for you as a resource to practice as much as you feel that you need to. All right, so um, I try not to overload you these last couple weeks with work so that you can do the practice more on your own as you feel fit, okay? I hope everything's going well. Keep emailing me. Good luck, be healthy, be safe, and I will hopefully see you guys soon.